And hello, everyone, and welcome back to The True Path Entrepreneur, your guide to living your purpose and growing a freedom-based business you love. I'm your host, Beth Weinstein, and I'm a transformational business coach helping current and aspiring entrepreneurs align with their true purpose and grow their business so that you can help more people, profit with your passion, and having a thriving business you love working on your terms from anywhere you want. And today's interview, we get to hear from my friend, Leah Lunn. Hey, Leah, how are you? Beth? Hi, everyone. Hey, Leah is the creator of One Whole Health Offering, coaching and retreats to lift women up so they can be their most vibrant self and live their most fulfilling life. This means putting a stop to overwhelm, anxiety, fear, self-doubt, and self-sabotage and being self-love, uh, beginning self-love. Her unique brain makeover method uses neuroscience and neuronutrition as a springboard to help you feel happy and confident and fight freedom from anxiety, emotional eating, depression, low energy, insomnia, pain, poor focus, overwhelm, burnout, and more. As a neuronutrition nu nutrient therapist, health and personal success coach, laughter yoga leader, author and speaker, and mentor for the Neuronutrient Therapy Institute, Leah regular, regularly appears on stages and blog radio all over the world. She served as a keynote speaker for the Librarian Leadership and Prosperity Conference in 2014 and the Inspire event in Southern California and Ecuador in 2017. Her humanitarian work includes the Water Bearers Project to bring clean, safe water to every person in the world. Leah, wow, you're up to really cool stuff. I didn't even know you, you had all these, uh, you know, success <laughs> coach and laughter yoga and author. I just know you as a woman that helps people with brain problems. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I, I, I'm really excited to interview you and find out a little bit more about what you teach because there's no one else in the series that is discussing this level of um, neuroscience and neuronutrition and our brain as it applies to not only business and entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, but everyday life. Now, can you tell people, like, how did you even come into this or, or wanting to help people through this journey? I would love to share. And by the way, you can call me brain lady or whatever. I get that all the time. <laughs> but I figure awesome. there are worse things <laughs> to be called. But um, yeah, how I came into it was really my own struggles um, early on, like really early on. Um, when I do webinars and things, I show a picture of me as a six month old and I'm like happy, giggly. I have a weird kind of mohawky curl on my head. Thanks, thanks, mom and dad, you know, but like, and then by five or six, age five or six, I'm just sullen. My whole face is looking to the side. Every picture in every family photo album is a straight line for a mouth and I'm looking away and I can't even look at the camera. And, and when you put those two images, it's clear something has shifted. Like mm -hmm. what has happened here? And I am not, um, uh, a survivor of abuse or anything like that. So it was all what was happening here. And what was happening here was two things. It was physical in the sense of I was getting more and more depleted in my brain chemistry. I didn't realize that till my late thirties, mm -hmm. by the way, but, but you know, that now I know that's what ha was happening. And then also my mind was making up as all of our young minds do beliefs and thoughts and this is how it is and this is who I am and they were um, partially stemming from the from the biochemistry and then you know also environment and all those things but I was deciding that I was um, to put it how I put it weird my family was weird I was from a weird place like I didn't belong in the, in this human experience so and that uh, compounds right that compounds the more you go out into life. I was very successful, don't get me wrong. I did very well in school, graduated, went to university, did very well, went into a corporate career where I had a, a huge um, territory and a company car by age 24 and thought I was you know, kind of all that, except deep down I didn't think I was any of that or deserving of that. And, and it just um, compiled on top of each other to a mm. point where I hit some burnout, but, but, you know, this is, is not a unique story. It's yeah. actually, unfortunately, a very common story for women, especially. Totally. I, I'm like shaking my head because I can totally relate whether it was corporate burnout or entrepreneurship burnout, because I've run multiple businesses and I've gotten to that point of like, you know, it's like, if you don't shut down emotionally, it's something else physically shuts down. Like I've been injured. I've been sick. I've had mystery illnesses that no one could figure out. And 
I know it was something deeper, you know, it's, it's the body waking you up and telling you something. And now it's really funny because I'm super into neuroscience. I actually, you know, I've, I've studied a fair amount. I studied it in college, um, you know, especially being on the entrepreneurial path. It was always about, um, okay, what could I do to make sure my mind is as sharp as possible? Because you really need to be on point so much, you know, especially if you're, you know, running a business by yourself. Um, so, you know, I, I studied meditation, you know, certain foods, things that I won't eat anymore, certain things that I was like, oh, I didn't know that dairy was making me tired all those years. Um, now, I'm curious, like you talk about this neuronutrition stuff that I've actually, I don't know, maybe I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about. How can, how can, what can you tell people about, um, about it and how to apply it to something like running a business or being an entrepreneur or even just having a really busy life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, to, you know, to your point, I just want to first say there's brain and mind. Mm. So, and sometimes we use those words interchangeably but brain is really like a mechanism it just takes input and gives an output so and the mind dictates so the mind could tell the brain it's happy the brain will put out happy chemicals the mind can tell the brain oh we're overwhelmed we're stressed this is hard and the brain will put out protectionary stress chemicals you mm -hmm. know so there's that relationship between brain and mind so we have to do the mindset work at some point but but <laughs> in addition to all of that, there's a very foundational piece, which is we are designed to make really feel good chemicals like serotonin, which probably everybody's heard of, um, the catecholamine group that include dopamine and norepinephrine, epinephrine, GABA, endorphin. It's not really important to remember all the chemicals right now as you're listening. It's, it's important to know that you're designed to make these chemicals and certain things can interfere with your brain making these chemicals. And when you're depleted in these chemicals, then it gets even harder to be optimistic, to be resilient, to not judge yourself, to not obsess, to not have cravings, to sleep mm -hmm. well, you know, all these other things. So this is a whole area. Neuronutrition really um, describes the feeding of the brain, the exact nutrients it needs to make these chemicals so that we can feel good feel our actual design is how i look at it because we are designed to feel that way yeah that's i mean i love that you say that because i'm like oh yeah that makes so much sense because you know we know and with so many of these guests on the series we've talked about being in alignment feeling you know your true self your true essence you know it's all about coming to your true purpose and this does include i you know i actually did talk to two guests about body you know like um how much emotion we hold in the body. And you're right, it's in the brain. It's like, I know when chemicals are off now because I've become so sensitive and I've gone through so much that I know if, um, you know, there's highs and lows. And I also know when my cortisol is really high, I make jokes that I could feel like an inch extra of fat when I'm stressed out. <laughs> and this yeah. stuff really does affect all areas. Like if you can't get sleep because you're just so high strung and wired, and then, you know, you don't get sleep. And then the next day you have to do these, you know, interviews and you can't function. It's all a downward spiral. So um, what are some things you suggest to people who, you know, are looking to improve either their in energy or let's say anxiety? Um, anxiety and fear comes up so much as an entrepreneur. Like what are some things we can do to stay in the good zone and the, the balance zone? Yeah. Yeah. So, so when someone is depleted, in any of these chemical areas and more often it's all of them if it's one it's probably the others because all the same things either help you or hurt you um the general things first of all protein because amino acids are the building block of these neurochemicals and if we're not getting good protein we're not getting the amino acids so protein 20 to 30 grams per meal. And I'm sorry, but animal is better <laughs> for providing that. So a lot of women don't eat calories, don't eat breakfast, don't eat protein, and then go vegetarian or vegan. And it's not a judgment. Mm -hmm. I, for personally, my clients, I honor if they say this, I'm doing this, it's religious, it's ethical, you know, okay, fine. But then we have to work harder because this is actually the design of your body. Mm -hmm. But so get protein, no matter what protein you choose, get, get enough of it. Good fats, saturating fats, which are, you know, the um, saturated, actually. <laughs> uh, and then of, co of course, the whole uh, range of beautiful phytonutrients that comes from all the vegetables and all of that and the fruits, little fruits. And everybody probably knows that, you know, on some level, 
but it really does make a huge difference. So in neuronutrition, what we do is we take the protein that would be in your protein foods and do it in, in supplement form at a really super high concentration to make up for the gap of what you've probably been eating all those years. Hmm. So wow. when you start to eat, it's not, it, it will probably not, to be really fair and honest, restore your levels to just, okay, now I'm going to eat protein. But it's a foundational piece that hap has to happen before, during, and after you do the targeted supplements. Targeted supplements is a really customized plan, taking into account everybody's health history, certain aminos trigger, um, cert can trigger certain adverse responses. So you want to be uh, methodical and have support in how you do that. But, but it's really a matter of time of giving the brain super high doses of, of protein. Yeah, and then there's the whole like manage your nervous system. So you mentioned mm -hmm. manage your nervous system, meditation, good sleep, anything less than six hours, your brain doesn't even get enough blood flow and oxygen to function. Oh. So like six is the minimum. Um, have quiet time to yourself. I call it vitamin Leah. So vitamin Beth, like, <laughs> <laughs> like solitude time. No, that's not going to the beach with your kids. That's that's being a mom, right? But vitamin Beth is something else. Um, and exercise movement is so important. Important not It's not only about metabolism, it's about detoxification. So we literally don't get rid of the toxins that come naturally with our body just operating. If we don't exercise, then they build up. Um, and I think speaking your truth, I'm just going to throw that one out there, <laughs> yeah. is really, really, really huge. I had a conversation this morning with a client who's having difficulty with her husband, and we're starting with just express yourself. You know, he doesn't have to fix it. Like, actually ask him, can I express and you do not respond? Mm, wow. <laughs> that's a, you know, that's a great starting point because all of that that we keep in, we keep in and it's toxic. Mm hmm yeah, this is, I mean, this is so, to me, this is very cutting edge what you're talking about, because I've heard little bits and pieces of all of this. I've learned the hard way. Um, I used to be one of those people that slept under six hours regularly. And looking back, I'm like, I don't know how I survived, except I was a really mean person back then. Um, <laughs> I was generally like, just always bitchier. And, um, you know, I just thought it was okay. I was like, I, you know, I work out. And um but it's funny, I've, you know, I've taken all the amino acids, I've taken random things without even knowing what I was doing. And some things were really great. And some things were like, you know, like making me feel very off, you know, so it was like, ah, I've learned everything through this experiment that doesn't really work. So I love that you teach this really holistic approach to this. Now, um, you know, as someone who is you know, really busy and um, let's say, you know, like on this path of um, running a new business, right? And there's these ups and downs and especially something like, um, you know, I always tell people, I think what I experienced about a year ago, you know, when I was in this major growth stage of my business, I, I've never been tested, but people told me I had adrenal fatigue of sorts because I was always go, go, go. I'm full of energy. You know, I used to run marathons. I still exercise a lot. I'm very high energy. I don't actually like a lot of sleep. Like if I could live without sleep, I would, but I'd make sure I sleep now. But you know, I, um, I was kind of running on this, this fume and it, it, you know, for a while it felt okay. You know, I was like, Oh, I'm getting a lot done. But then I started crashing like really, really hard, you know, just, um, it was just these ups and downs and ups and downs and like hormones, like, you know, things in my body were changing. And, you know, eventually I came to, you know, I went on a retreat for almost two weeks and did basically did nothing and started from there, like slowing down. But, you know, I'm curious, like, this is a very common thing. I, I'm assuming for very high level entrepreneurs and high yeah. achievers. I mean, what do you tell them when they're so used to living like this? For me, I was living like that for the last 20 years. <laughs> Well, the first thing that comes to my mind, this may or may not apply to you, but um, something I hear a lot is I work best under pressure. Yeah. And to me, what that means is actually low catecholamine. So it's actually one of those chemicals because, because it means you have to get into kind of a last minute emergency state to actually release any chemicals mm. and life doesn't have to be that way. I just want to say, say that. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be the first thing I 
check, but certainly it could be adrenal as well. Adrenal is very tied to um, neurotransmitter depletion. So I like probably at least 90% of the women I work with, we end up testing their adrenals as well. Wow. Um, and there's things, and you're right, adrenals at first will put out a lot of cortisol to help you deal, help you. And I was there, I was there wow. in um, the environment of retail and fashion. So it was a very like, you're only as good as what happened a minute ago. And then, you know, you're terrible otherwise. <laughs> and that whole up and down of that. Um, and, and it burned me out. It burned me out so much that I walked away from my corporate job. I cashed out my 401k. I broke up with my boyfriend. Like I was just like, I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go hide out somewhere. And yeah. I had a very lovely beach, but, yeah. but, but, you know, I wouldn't have had to handle it that way if I would have known what I, what I know now. So, um, so as far, and then there's the whole piece of comparison and, um, mindset, which, you know, I can't possibly, you or I can't cover. And I know you teach a lot of this, Beth, really, really, you know, you deep dive deep with your clients. Like that's a whole, your programming, yeah. what you think is successful, measuring things in good or bad, or, you know, failure. I yeah. love the expression, win some and learn some. Yeah. That's what it is. It's totally. just experience life, win some, learn some. But so you take steps in all those areas. But if I had to say something to people listening here, protein, sleep, Mm -hmm. and time alone solitude that's a good one and I know that would be my starting recipe <laughs> and our society seems to have so much trouble with a lot of that you know like mm -hmm. someone else I was just talking to we say you know it's a badge of honor to be working 14 hour days and not sleeping and then constantly be on the go and you know telling everybody how much we work you know no one even I prescribe meditation to all my clients and you know so many times I hear that I don't I don't have time for that you know, even 10 minutes a day, I'm like, you don't have time for 10 minutes. Like there's something wrong here. Now yeah. I've always been curious, like what is, do you know, what's the cause of this thing called brain fog? You know, so many people get it. And, um, I actually hear this, you know, not so much from my clients, but other people say it, um, yeah. almost as an excuse. Like I couldn't get anything done this week. I was just in a fog. You know, is that something we can control? Well, brain fog can be a sign of a lot of different things from, low dopamine in, you know, in the purely bio, bio brain chemistry piece, low dopamine for sure. But it also could be something viral, Lyme disease. Mm. Um, honestly, herpes, over 50% of people have herpes and that's yeah. a big cause of brain fog. Um, but there's also an emotional side to it where if you don't express, if you're always taking in stimulus and you don't speak your truth and you don't express and you don't say no and you don't design your calendar in a way that supports you, you also will have that um, just like going from thing to thing and I can't even figure out what to focus on. So mm. it's why I love the area of holistic health, which of course One Whole Health is based on, is that we're all of that. We're all of that more. We are body, we are mind, we are emotions, we are higher power. We don't tap into that enough generally speaking, um, mm. to, to not let all the stimulus uh, affect us. So, so I'm going really deep in like a two sentence conversation here, but really it comes down to self-love, I think, mm. because when we love ourselves, then we give ourselves space and time. Mm. We know that we are mortal. We're not superhuman. We do need sleep. We do need hydration. We do need nutrition. Um, we get to have time in the morning for ourselves, time in the evening for ourselves. Um, and we don't have to be all things to all people and figure out everybody else in our family's problems. When you're, when you're trying to do that, then no wonder you have brain fog, yeah. right? Your brain, your brain is in a constant state of panic and stress. And the brain believes whatever the mind tells it. So if the mind tells it we are stressed, the brain will be stressed. If the mind, um, is assuming the emotion of other people and the situations of other people and the problems of other people and feeling the brain is going to go into fog mm. because it, it's going to be in total overwhelm, you know? So yeah. little things like even moving your body in a way that's happy. Simplest trick I ever heard is, you know how you can put a pen or pencil in your mouth? Your brain believes even when your mouth turns up, 
your brain starts to believe you're happy and relaxed. Oh, yeah. This is why I'm a laughter yoga leader. This is the whole premise of laughter yoga is we laugh so we can be happy. We're not laughing because we're happy or laughing because something's funny. We literally get together in groups and laugh on purpose for no reason. Mm -hmm. Nothing is funny. So you could call it fake laugh. But yeah. because when you laugh, just like when you meditate or when you do breathing exercise, your brain starts to go, oh, we're happy. Okay. We're happy. We're not fog. We're mm -hmm. happy. Wow. So it's, it's a marriage of all those things. It's a dance between all those things. And I know we have to do this for now inside of like a human world, but it's entirely possible. It's a step at a time and it's commitment to simple strategies repetitively. Because that whole thing about 21 days to make a habit, um, neuroscience actually shows it's somewhere between 21 and 240 days okay. to make it. So practice, 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 practice. I know. I always tell people, it's, I'm like, it's more than that. It's got to be more. I always say 40, but then I don't know where I'm getting that from. Yeah. Well, yeah. well a lot of people right. probably do make a new habit in 40, you know, but yeah. the point is keep going until you do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you just, it's funny, this whole question about brain fog. I'm like, that just explain a lot about, um, you know, I, I tell a lot of clients this, I tell it to myself all the time about really staying focused in the present step, one thing at a time, because when you're trying to take on, you know, a million different things all at once and we feel superhuman and we feel like we can do 20 different things at once, you know, what happens at least with me and I've seen with a lot of my clients is you just then start to shut down and nothing gets done. Yeah. You have to stay hyper-focused and do one thing at a time and include you know, like you said, space for solitude, space for meditation, space for sleep, because it's just, it's not even possible. There's no, I, I have one friend who I think is truly superhuman and even he sleeps, you know, <laughs> like, of course. Yeah. And he, he still does one thing at a time because you literally yeah. can't do more. Now I have um, one more question about, um, what do you think of coffee and caffeine or just caffeine in general and the use of, um, you know, again, Especially I come, you know, I used to work in tech startups and this whole tech startup world was all about like, oh, we just drink 20 cups of coffee every day and, you know, we work till like three in the morning and we're fine. Like, but, and it's our society is really, you know, hung up on this. But what do you think of it as a... Yeah, well, um, there's a few things. Any stimulant like that, caffeine, um, first of all, is going to raise your dopamine threshold. So if you drink a lot of caffeine, it's going to become even harder for you to have a natural dopamine flow. It also deteriorates. It, it breaks down the brain chemistry. So then you don't have that natural dopamine just coming out. So, um, you know, there are some studies that a little bit is okay. I am definitely not an all or nothing thinker. So a little is better than a lot. <laughs> so start where you are, start cutting back, start cutting back. But know that every time it also fluctuates your blood sugar, caffeine and coffee does do the same thing, sugar wood or white flour or whatever. So that's a stress to your body. So that is going to cause your cortisol to be to rise. Anytime cortisol rises, in, insulin rises and vice versa. So all of the health problems that we know of that come from elevated insulin or elevated cortisol are going to come from caffeine mm. you know so i would i would much encourage that people would look at how do i boost my dopamine and my other catecholamines naturally if you need uh, to catch up that gap is you know through amino acids and then you really it is your natural caffeine the other thing that i want to mention is what i call a non-food menu if what you're going for is to feel motivated and excited and up, make a list of at least 20 things that motivate you that are non-food or, or drink or yeah. substance related period. You know, live your life that way. Make caffeine look like such a silly substitute <laughs> yeah. like as, as compared to sailing around the world or, um, you know, having a business that just lights you up. Mm -hmm. You know, go for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then caffeine will be like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I know I, I always have these like ups and down relationships with caffeine and I've cut back so much over the years and you know I, I'm like you I'm like there's so many other ways you know and, and the amount I take in now is so small but it's just so funny how many other people I see and how many you know especially this world of entrepreneurship people get caught up in this, this cycle and I'm like you know what actually if you try to get off of it and 
or try at least cut back and substitute some other things that give you energy in so many other ways. Like you said, like inspiration or even like lots of water. You know, I started drinking a gallon of water a day this summer and I was like, whoa, like I was manifesting like crazy and my body felt good and I didn't even want caffeine. So (laughs) it's great. Now, can you tell yeah. people a little bit more about um, the free gift you offer in today's email, if they click the link, is a self-scoring brain chemistry assessment and then a feel-good-now strategy call. What is this assessment all about? Yeah, so the assessment, If for anybody listening in going, oh my gosh, is this what's going on with my brain chemistry? I don't know. You know, I've never heard of this, probably, because it's not talked about enough. That's why mm. I'm First of all, I take it, you know, I try to promote it. I'm also a mentor for the Neuronutrient Therapy Institute where we mm-hmm. literally train our classes. Doctors come in, therapists come in, nutritionists, okay. you know, chiropractors, all of their disciplines because this is really not addressed very well at all in any of those educational um, realms. So, um, the, the, so the assessment is really self-scoring. It's, it's 40 symptoms, one to 10 scale. If you have anything over a five, it's a sign of depletion. Mm. So then hopefully that will inspire to take action. And as I mentioned, it's, it's a customized kind of situation and protocol. Work with somebody, work with anybody familiar with um, amino acid therapy. But you'll know yourself if this is uh, going on for you. And I really offer that because I know for me, the day that I realized it wasn't who I was. So I talked about that little girl and the straight smile and it took me till my 30s of looking at every possible explanation and when I heard nutritional psychology that term and it it was just a load off it was like oh it's -hmm. not who I am it's just about supplements and food Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. life changing a a ton of guilt and shame and all that Mm -hmm. came off so um so take it if you take it only for yourself Take it so that you know it's not your fault, it's not your personality, it's not a character flaw, it's literally biochemical, it's no different than a muscle being out of shape or something. Um, And then if you are interested in a customized protocol, then there's the feel good strategy, feel good now strategy call, and I will give you lifestyle, you'll walk away from that call with at least one thing you can implement and hopefully get educated around, you know, a custom protocol and how to go about doing that because it makes a world of difference. The most dramatic, if I can just quickly share the most dr- dramatic shift I ever saw, I was do, I was um, teaching the class, the certification class. I had a group of practitioners. I had a chiropractor who had not looked up, had not smiled, had not talked, um, was just completely disengaged from the whole thing. And we were, we were doing a trial of amino acid and it came to her turn for serotonin. It came her turn to share did you feel anything? And she had the smile on her face. And it was noticeable to me because it was unlike how she'd been the entire day. I was like, wow. So I said, hey, did you feel anything? And she said, I don't know. But she had this like, big grin on her face. I said, do, do you know you're smiling? Hmm. And she just went. <laughs> and she literally got a compact mirror out of her purse and looked at her own face to see mm-hmm. herself smiling. Now that's a very fast response. That was like 20 minutes, I kid you not. But it made that kind of difference. So it's worth exploring, take the assessment, see for yourself, um, and it will empower you to be a stronger entrepreneur because Beth and I were talking um, before mm-hmm. recording here that I think being an entrepreneur is about the biggest stretch in your personal development that can ever happen. Mm-hmm. Everything about yourself personally is going to come up when you start your own business. So to, to make yourself better is to make your business better. Of course. It's totally. Just- and I'm going to thank you so much, Leah. I'm so glad you're teaching this. Like you said, there's not a lot of people talking about it. I think it is so important. I know this, you know, my other business is actually in fitness. I know, you know, a fair amount about health and I, I think you're totally right. This is, um, you know, any journey, whether it's entrepreneurship, career, work, whatever it is, you know, it is holistic. It's our bodies is, is the main source of everything, you know, and if we're not really in alignment in this physical way and we're, you know, in brain fog or, you know, the chemicals aren't there and everything's, you know, off, then how can, how can you be thriving? How can you be abundant? How can you have a business that's growing? So I'm glad you're teaching this and I hope everybody will download the free gift because this is really important and 
you know, it's something that is, I, I like to say, this is very easily controllable too. You know, it's like, this is all in your hands and you can make changes. You don't have to actually live the way you've been living. So <laughs> yeah, thank sure. you so much. Oh, and also tell people a little bit more about where they can find you online and you know, what you offer and anything you have upcoming this year. Sure. So, um, so we're at onewholehealth.com. Um, we're also at thebrainmakeover.com because that's the five step message, uh, method, excuse me, that's, um, that really any of our coaching programs, whether it's group or private, um, uh, follow mm -hmm. and, um, Facebook, Leah Lund, the brain coach, YouTube, Leah Lund, the brain coach, uh, Instagram, one whole health. So yeah, awesome. we're all over social media as well. Yeah, see the brain coach, not the brain lady or the brain woman. <laughs> no. It's good to be known like that, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, of course, the supplement lady. I yeah. even take that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> hey, our brains are pretty damn important. So I'm glad you're, I'm really glad you're getting this word out there. And thank you so much for being with us on the True Path Entrepreneur. This was awesome. And everybody, you can join in tomorrow. We'll have more interviews and I will see you then. Bye, Leah. Bye, Beth.